organizers was looking for athletes to blog while they were at the Olympic Games. Um, I contacted the lady and she said the positions had already been filled and um, you know, she'd keep me in mind if something came up and I said, well, my dad worked for IBM for 35 years and uh, IBM and Lenovo are linked together. Um, so I said, you know, starting a blog for the Olympics would be a really good idea because I was getting tons of emails every day, friends, family, wanting to know how my training was, what I was doing, and I was like, you know, I'm just going to start a blog. So I started the blog, and about two weeks later, that same lady I talked to at Lenovo, uh, she called me back and said, you know, we've got an extra spot. Would you still be interested? And I said, I've already started blogging on my own. And so it just kind of took from there, and um, the blog was really great. I had over 30,000 hits, and I was featured on bloggers, like top 10 bloggers of the day during the Olympic Games. My hometown newspaper, they actually published, um, they have a blog on their website and they linked it to my blog so people from my hometown could follow it as well. I had teachers from middle school and high school following it, leaving comments. I had people from all over the world that I didn't even know that were cheering for me and, and behind me. So uh, my hometown newspaper, as well as Lenovo, uh, when we were in Beijing, they had a press conference there and we met with other journalists um, just talking about the whole blogging experience, how blogging um, for the Olympic Games, people actually really enjoyed that. They had over 100 athlete bloggers and people from all around the world were following us and they liked that one-on-one -on -one personal experience where the newspapers write about the highlights of the games where the bloggers, we write about personal things, such as going to the Great Wall with my family or my husband arriving, and it's the personal side of it. My parents thought the blog was really cool, like they were even reading it and they're like, you didn't tell us this, you didn't tell us you were doing that, and it was just a really easy way to keep in touch with everybody, even my parents when I was in China. Um, you know, they thought it was really cool and I put them in the blog, I featured them in the blog, and. Uh, you know, it's just, it was awesome how many people were checking it out. At the beginning of our trip, we started out, we flew from Colorado Springs to Denver. And in the Denver airport, we got to meet uh, a celebrity. It's not a celebrity to everybody, they may not know who he is, but um, his name's Leland. He's on Dog the Bounty Hunter. He was in front of me in line getting coffee. So I took that as a photo op. Um, from Denver, we went to San Diego. We were in San Diego uh, for one day, and all the girls and the guys on the uh, weightlifting team for the Olympics, we met there. Um, along with a couple other sports, we were the first group to go through the team processing. And team processing consists of going over media stuff, how to give interviews, and or how to get interviewed, not give interviews, how to get interviewed by the media. Um, talking also about safety issues in China that may arise to be prepared. Um, and then we went through the team outfitting, which was like the highlight of it. Um, you're basically given a shopping cart. It's a Home Depot shopping cart. You go into this room and you go to about 15 or 20 different stations. At each one, you're given one item. Uh, you go to the next one, you go all the way around. And by the time you get to the end of it, your cart is full of stuff. Um, we ended up with three pairs of sneakers, a pair of flip-flops, um, many t-shirts, many tank tops, um, our opening ceremonies outfit, our closing ceremonies outfit, uh, the metal podium outfit. Uh, there's an outfit for everything uh, imaginable. And then they throw in their training gear and then just casual wear. Um, you're also given a cell phone to have while in China um, so you can keep in touch with your team. Um, your coach can call you if need be. Um, everything imaginable you can, we get. Other than getting all the really neat clothes uh, from outfitting, the second highlight was meeting Arnold Schwarzenegger at uh, the team processing. He came through and he met 
um, with a couple groups of athletes while at the processing, and he stopped and talked to Melanie Roach, Natalie Bergner, and myself. Um, he talked to us about weightlifting and about the press and how he used to he used to do uh, Olympic lifting. Um, you're also outfitted there for the opening ceremony stuff, um, which it has to be tailored to fit you. So you're given a tailored jacket, tailored pants. They were so efficient. They were actually from Ralph Lauren. And you walked in, you put the coat on, and they measured you. They just marked it, marked your pants, and you had to come back in an hour to pick up your stuff. I mean, it was so efficient, and it ran so smoothly um, for 600 athletes and staff to come through. It has to run efficiently. So uh, the next day, we packed up, and we went to the San Diego airport, and we flew out from there, and we flew straight to Beijing. Um, we were on a plane with normal people. It was half normal people and half athletes, so they were really excited. They knew we were excited, and we all had the same jackets on, so you could tell like we were Team USA. Um, but they were just as excited as we were, and the people we sat next to were talking to us. And um, so it was really, really neat. Um, the trip was very long. I was very excited in the beginning. Halfway through, I got a little tired, and then by the end. Yeah, by the end, I was like, I just want to get off the plane. So flying in was just, once we got there, like when the plane landed, it hit again. Like I was just up and down the emotions of it. Checking in, we had our own Olympic processing lane. So we could just walk right up and go right through customs and everything, um, right through the airport. Um, from there, we arrived at the Olympic Village and we were greeted by a mob of uh, reporters and television camera crews. My grandmother's friend was watching something on television where they have the, the preview channel and they had a group of athletes getting off the bus arriving at the Olympic Village and it was our group. So we were, we were the first American team to be at the village. So when we got there, there was not a lot of people there. It was really quiet. We could just walk into the cafeteria and get food. And a week later, you were waiting in line. There was 10,000 people there. So the rooms were really nice. Um, there was enough housing there for 10,000 people. Um, so I roomed with Cheryl Hayworth, a 2000 Olympic bronze medalist and 2004 Olympian. Uh, so she's a three-time Olympian. I roomed with her, and it was absolutely awesome. Um, I couldn't have asked for a better roommate. Her and I have become good friends. Uh, living together three weeks, you kind of have to. Um, and then across the way um, was Natalie Bergner and Melanie Roach. And we also had some cyclists in our room for a little bit. We had two track cyclists sharing the room. So it was neat because different sport and um, coaches were across the hall. So it was uh, the the rooms were very nice. The village is actually going to be used as regular like housing, so people could buy these apartments for a million dollars after the games were over. Um, so it was they were very very nice. Um, our suite had three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and then a common shared living area. So six athletes. Um, it was very nice. We had closets where we could put all that free outfitting that we got. Um, and we just kind of hung out a lot, and we sat and we played cards. Um, we played cards a lot, um, or watched movies on our laptop. So, uh, looking out of our dorm, we could see uh, there was obviously another set of dorms behind us, but we could see the city of Beijing. Um, and then across the way, the, the building across the way was uh, the team from Denmark. So, but most of the countries took up one building. Team USA had three buildings. That's how many athletes we had. I believe we had 596 athletes total. So um, the Olympic Village was absolutely incredible. It was a city within a city. We had a florist. We had a place to get our hair done, a place to get our nails done, a post office. We had bags in our room we could bring every day.